Fear not, friend. I am keeping the voices at bay with this mighty cap atop my head. Cool, cool. Super cool. Soon into so level I six, I started a quest for Claptrap. Oh, no, no. He required something to put on top of his head, and he couldn't quite figure out what he wanted that to be. That led me to this colorful character named Sid, who was wearing a tinfoil hat that for some reason Claptrap thought would look really good on him. Maybe it would. Maybe it would improve his personality. Maybe he'd be less annoying. Perhaps a tinfoil hat would solve everyone's problems. Sid decided to thank me for stopping the alien mind control rays by attacking me. This makes perfect sense in the context of Borderlands, in that it doesn't. Then I truly met my match, a door that closed when I got too close to it. This would be my Waterloo. And then I realized that one move I got at the very beginning of the game that I had no real purpose for before, the slide, was the real key to solving this puzzle. My sliding reminded me of a simpler time back on level one, which felt like just yesterday, because it was. I could finally return my assorted junk back to Claptrap, at which point I found a fun little game I could play where I tried to accessorize him. I could finally live out my dream of being a trendsetter, even though the stakes were particularly low. I decided to go with the wire hanger because it gave me the impression that I might be able to just stick Claptrap in a closet if I needed to. I then engaged in my new favorite pastime, selling off a bunch of things that I randomly picked up because my backpack was full. This seemed to be a common occurrence up to this point and would continue throughout my playthrough. And apparently there is no Marie Kondo on Pandora. Back when I was shooting Sid so I could get his tinfoil hat, I received a new side quest to take out The Undertaker. And may I say that The Undertaker was a particularly annoying villain. I would constantly smash him with as much firepower as I could muster, at which point he would go down a hidey hole, emerge, and without a turret. But I was still able to best him and he dropped a nice purple weapon that was above my level so I couldn't equip it yet. Thus, I was motivated forward to kill everything and get enough experience to get to level 7. Back on the main quest, I checked out some customization options for my Outrunner. At this point, I had not unlocked all that many things, but I did have a variety of neat paint skins that I could put on. And I had acquired heavy armor, which would definitely improve my survivability. I should mention that I really like this level of customization for your vehicle. It's something that I didn't see in previous Borderlands games, and it is greatly appreciated. What up, my bandit orphans? Heading up to the Holy Broadcast Center was particularly arduous, not because it was difficult, but because Tyreen insisted on talking a lot. I mean, a lot. Again, the biggest problem with the Calypso twins is that they are not Handsome Jack. They are a cruel imitation of Handsome Jack, and not a particularly good one. Then again, they might be the perfect villains for this story because I really wanted to shoot them continuously throughout this entire playthrough. I was so close to level 7, I could feel it. And then, I saw another claptrap. Collecting the dead claptrap, as I have throughout this playthrough, led me to get to level 7. It's important to note that these crew challenges actually offer a ton of experience and really minimal effort. So it is definitely worth taking a little time exploring the landscape so you can complete as many as possible. And that is how I arrived at level seven. On the next episode, we get deep into the Holy Broadcast Center. That didn't sound right.